I'm very excited today because I'm launching a reading project that I've been planning for a long time. Today, I'm here to announce the launch of 12 books for 2022. I have selected 12 books that I would like to read along with you this year. But before I go into the books themselves, I need to explain to you how we're going to go about this. So 12 books for 2022 is not exactly a book club. It is a selection of 12 books to read throughout the year, which I will be reviewing monthly. Because we are already in late January as I make this video, we will begin in February. So that means that there will be an extra book later on so we can get to that 12th number. The way this is going to work is that you will know exactly what book I will discuss every given month. So you can plan your reading accordingly. Now, you don't have to read all 12 books. You can read as many or as few of them as you like. And you don't have to even read them either in the order or during the months that I am going to do so myself. You will find the full list of titles with links to the book depository in the description box for this video, so you can refer to that at any point throughout the year. 12 Books for 2022 is a project that will only take place here on YouTube, so you don't need to have a social media presence or a Goodreads account or anything like that. As long as you're watching this video right now, you can take part in this reading project. Every month, I will do a full book review on the assigned book for that month. So if you read one of the books ahead of time, at least you will know in which month I will discuss it at length on a video. I really do hope this is clear, but if you have any questions, I will be happy to clarify any doubts in the comment section below. And I would also love to hear from any of you who want to read along with me, so please tell me which books you are likely to read. For this year, I have selected 12 novels that were originally written in English and are widely available, of course. There is a mix of classics and more contemporary literary fiction. I hope that you'll find at least one or two books you want to read with me. Let us just get into it now and talk about each of the 12 books. We're going to start in February with The Sea, The Sea by Iris Murdoch. This novel won the Booker Prize in 1978, but that is not necessarily why I have chosen it. I've been hearing great things about this novel for many years, and I've always been curious to read something by Iris Murdoch. It can be difficult to decide where to begin with an author like Iris Murdoch. I do have other titles that I am curious about, but The Sea, The Sea sounds incredibly intriguing to me. From what I have read about this novel, in it Murdoch delves into the motivations of different characters and the duality between their inner thoughts and motivations and their public face or what they do in public. The protagonist of this novel is a playwright who one day decides to become a recluse, so he isolates himself in a house by the sea. That to me sounds like a promising premise for a novel. From what I have read doing some research for this project, Iris Murdoch is a divisive writer in that some readers hold her as one of the best, but others find her prose old-fashioned and typical of the 1970s. Now, I'm not sure what that means because I don't think I've read many British books from that time, but I guess that what her detractors mean is that her books don't speak to readers now, or at least not as much as they did when they were first published. I don't know. It sounds like The Sea, The Sea is a kind of social satire, and that sounds good to me. Okay, in March we're going to read The Corrections by Jonathan Franzen. I just said that some people consider Iris Murdoch divisive, but I think the most divisive writer on this list is probably Jonathan Franzen. He recently published a novel entitled Crossroads that sounds really good, and I would love to read it, but I think that I should probably read some of his earlier work first. And The Corrections was his breakthrough novel in 2001 and remains one of his best known novels to this day. So why not start with that? The Corrections seems to be a novel about American life at the turn of the century. It focuses on an elderly couple and their three adult children. This novel is quite chunky 
but its ambition is not only to do with its length. It is a single work of fiction that attempts to deal with middle-class American life at the very end of the 20th century. And I just cannot wait to see how Franzen tackles that and what themes he delves into. The Corrections won the National Book Award for Fiction in 2001, and it also won or was nominated for a bunch of other prestigious awards. I don't know if you remember this, but the Corrections was selected for Oprah's Book Club when it first came out, and Franzen didn't seem to be too happy about his book being chosen, which caused a minor controversy back in 2001. I just have the vaguest memory about it. For April, we have The Blue Flower by Penelope Fitzgerald. This is a historical novel of the early life of the German romantic poet Friedrich von Hardenberg, better known as Novalis. I think Penelope Fitzgerald, who died in the year 2000, deserves to get a lot more love and attention than I feel she gets these days. She wrote many novels, one of them, Offshore, uh, won the Booker Prize and also uh, a short story collection and several biographies. I have read great uh, reviews of her work, so she seems to be beloved by critics, yet I don't hear a lot from readers of her work. I first heard about Penelope Fitzgerald about 10 years ago, but I don't think it was the right time for me to immerse myself in her writing. I did try, but I felt I wasn't quite getting it. This is something, by the way, that has happened to me with other writers, most recently with the American novelist Ann Tyler, whose writing I never seemed to be able to get into, and now I just love it. I don't know if this will happen with Penelope Fitzgerald, but The Blue Flower just sounds like a delightful novel, and it is only about 160 pages, so we'll see. In May, we're going to read Elizabeth Costello by J.M. Coetzee. If you're a longtime viewer of my channel, you will probably know that Coetzee is one of my favorite writers. I love his novel Disgrace, uh, which I have reviewed here, but I have not read anything else by him that gets close to that, so I just keep reading more of his novels. I remember when Elizabeth Costello first came out in 2003, which was also the same year in which Coetzee won the Nobel Prize for Literature. And this novel, which is about a fictional, famous Australian writer who travels around the world giving lectures on different literary and non-literary topics, has been on my TBR ever since. Coetzee famously moved from his native South Africa to Australia and then later became an Australian citizen. So far, all the books I have read by him, uh, he wrote in South Africa, and they all seem to be very much about South Africa. So I'm curious to read something by him that is based on his experiences in Australia. I also love novels about writers, so Elizabeth Costello seems to have all the right ingredients. Book for June is Moon Tiger by Penelope Lively. Moon Tiger first came out in 1987 and it won the Booker Prize. A terminally ill elderly woman named Claudia Hampton, who works as a historian, decides to write a history of the world, but I don't think that's what we will get from this novel. I have the feeling it will be more about Claudia's life than anything else. I don't know how experimental this novel is. It does sound quite experimental because I've read that apart from not being linear or follow a chronological order, the narrative is also written from different points of view. And I must confess that I'm also intrigued by the title, Moon Tiger, and wonder if we find out where it comes from in the novel. For the rest of the year, I have chosen a couple of classics, but also some more fiction from the 20th century from Britain and America. So in July, we will read Light in August by William Faulkner. This is one of the classic novels that I want to read in 2022. I feel like uh, people sometimes read this novel in August, uh, which is why I have tried to be a bit original and have chosen it for July instead. Of course, as I said in the introduction, uh, you can read any of these novels whenever you like. Uh, this monthly guide is mostly intended to help you know when I will be discussing each of the books here on this channel, okay? I have read and studied some novels by William Faulkner before, and something that has always struck me about his books is 
how perfect their titles are. I think all of Faulkner's novels have great titles and Light in August is no exception. I cannot put my finger on what it is, but I just love the sound of the title for this novel. I know very little about Light in August though. I only know that it has elements of modernist fiction and southern gothic, but I do know that some critics consider it one of the best novels ever written in English and one of the masterpieces by Faulkner. I don't feel Light in August is going to be an easy novel to read, which is why I have selected it for July, which is a month when I normally read a lot and the days are really long, so I'm hoping that will help me tackle something like this successfully. But if the last couple of years are anything to go by, for some reason August is the one month of the year when I read more books. This is why I have chosen not just one, but two novels for August. Because we're starting this project in February, as I said in the introduction, and I wanted to do 12 books, inevitably I had to add an extra book on one of the months, and I decided that August was perfect for that. The first book for August is going to be The Magus by John Falls. I've always been curious about John Falls because he was this innovative postmodernist writer in the late 20th century, but I have hardly ever heard from people who have read any of his books. A friend of mine once uh, told me that she reads The Magus once a year, which means that she obviously loves it. I knew nothing about it at the time, so I did a little research and I found out that this novel deals with metafiction, which immediately had me intrigued. The Magus is said to tell the story of a young British man named Nicholas Earth who is working as an English teacher on a Greek island, and that is all I care to find out about the plot. That is enough for me to want to include this novel in my 12 books for 2022. I really hope at least some of you will join me in reading this novel in the summer or whenever you have time, because I feel that there is going to be a lot to say about it. And the second novel for August is An Artist of the Floating World by Kazuo Ishiguro. I've never gelled with Ishiguro's writing. From memory, I think I've read The Remains of the Day and Never Let Me Go, so why am I reading another novel by Ishiguro if I haven't liked the ones I have already read? Well, when it comes to writers, I believe in giving their work a second, a third, or even a fourth chance. You know, sometimes you read a book at the wrong time, or your opinion is colored by what other books you have uh, read right before picking that one up. So I am a great believer in coming back and rereading books that didn't quite work, or perhaps, you know, even choosing something else by the same author further down the line. I must say that I find the title An Artist of the Floating World very evocative. This was Ishiguro's second novel. It first came out in 1986 and it is set in Japan after World War II. The novel is narrated by a painter who looks back on his life. Ishiguro himself was born in Japan in the post-World War II period, but his family moved to Britain when he was only five years old and he is considered a British writer. To my knowledge, all his books are originally written in English as well. I have to say that Ishiguro's latest fiction, where he's delved more into science fiction, doesn't appeal to me, and I did not have a good time reading his novel Let Never Let Me Go, which is in that vein, but An Artist of the Floating World seems to be completely different and promising. I know that there seems to be a lot of award-winning books and celebrated writers on this list, but I promise you that I wasn't thinking of any of that when I compiled this list. Having said that, we have another Nobel Prize winner in September. That month we will read The Golden Notebook by Doris Lessing. This is one of Lessing's best-known novels and it famously examines politics, chiefly communism, the sexual revolution, and women's liberation. I do love an ambitious, challenging book, and I'm sure that The Golden Notebook will be thought-provoking and it will give us a lot to discuss. The book for October is Under the Volcano by Malcolm Laurie, which, as a few of the books on this list, is one of the classics I want to read in 2022. This is a novel from 1947, and I expect it to be one of the most challenging books for me personally. The novel's protagonist is an alcoholic British diplomat who lives in Mexico, and I'm including Under the Volcano here because one of my general reading goals is to read books that are critically acclaimed but don't necessarily sound like they are for me. I think like most people, I like to read books that I enjoy and have a good time with, 
which tend to be most of the books I read anyway. But I also like to challenge myself sometimes because, you know, a book that I don't think I'm going to enjoy or that from the plot description doesn't sound that enjoyable to me ends up being great sometimes. So I think it's worth taking that risk every so often. And if I don't enjoy the novel, at least I know I have read it and I have an opinion on it and that will inform future choices. But that is just me. You might be watching this video right now and thinking that Under the Volcano is a great novel or one that you would really love to read, in which case I hope you will join me in October when I discuss it here. I do feel more optimistic about my choice for November, which is Of Human Bondage by W. Somerset Mom. I said in a recent video that this was one classic I definitely wanted to read this year and some of you told me how much you loved it. And that got me really excited about it. I'm hoping this novel will be as delightful as some of you have told me it is, which is why I am saving it for my least uh, favorite part of the year. This is also why I have chosen The Good Soldier by Ford Maddox Ford for December. This is a novel from 1915, which from what I have read, was very innovative at the time because of its non-chronological narrative and its unreliable narrator. I think it also deals with one of my favorite literary topics, which is adultery. My regards to Emma Bovary and Anna Karenina. So what better way to round off a year of reading great books? I'm so excited.